Uh, let's let's play this clip from uh, from this guy Charles Payne. Um, he is is he on Fox or is he on Fox Business? And he's coming over to the uh, the the mothership. I know he does gi- some stuff on Fox to give Business. some insight into uh, economics and um, and economic behavior by people. Um, he is on Fox and Friends explaining why the minimum wage is so problematic. Ocasio Cortez facing backlash in some corners for comparing airport croissants prices to the f- to the fight for a higher minimum wage. The Democratic Congressman. Pause from it. New- I follow the news every day, and <laughs> I was not aware. Alex, are you, have you been aware of this whole? Um, there, there are some quarters where uh, people are very uh, upset about comparing. Uh, croissant with a minimum wage. Uh, I was not. I was not aware this had sparked outrage. Yes, uh, she wrote uh, croissants at LaGuardia are going for seven dollars a piece. Yet some people think getting a whole hour of person uh, of personal dedicated human labor for fifteen bucks is too expensive. <laughs> so in other words, you've got to work um, like one sixteenth of your day uh, of of your pay has to go to buy a croissant, a croissant how many uh how many croissants do you think those workers can make in an hour that they're making 15 dollars well you know it's funny is the government can just create croissants and <laughs> you can just mint an unlimited number of them <laughs> according to what modern modern monetary <laughs> modern yeah. croissant pastry theory, theory modern pastry theory <laughs> a higher Minimum wage. The Democratic Congresswoman from New York tweeting on Monday, croissants at LaGuardia are going for $7 a piece. Yet some people think getting a whole hour of personal, dedicated human labor for $15 is too expensive. Well, this morning, a New York Post op-ed firing back, arguing your wage is no kind of measure of human worth. Charles Payne is the host of Making Money with Charles Payne on the Fox Business Network, and he joins us now to weigh in on this. What doesn't she get, Charles? Well, it was a clumsy attempt, right, to just, I mean, she's grappling all the time. Uh, you know, the proponents of these minimum what? wage or higher minimum wage uh, need to understand a few things. And it, there's another follow-up tweet, just so people understand when I set this up properly, when people responded to her, she always gets rankled. So she tweeted out again at the GOP, uh, always re- replies to her, and she says, I guess the idea is foreign to them since their policies treat people as disposable. Well, think about a standard minimum wage. Uh, first of all, when you raise the minimum wage, the business has to raise the price of the products. Mm-hmm. Guess who gets hurt the most there? Pause Poor house. Now, this we we know is not true. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we have plenty of of tests uh, on this. Mm-hmm. Um, the margins on those croissants seem like they're pretty high right now. Mm-hmm. But even to the extent that uh, um, the cost of goods have to go up nominally, right? What did they figure out with McDonald's that it would like add like literally like two cents to every hamburger yeah, or I think something? It was something completely um, like that. There are that many more people able to afford your yes. croissant or your hamburgers. Mm-hmm. But- well, think about a standard minimum wage. Uh, first of all, when you raise the minimum wage, the business has to raise the price of the products. Mm-hmm. Guess who gets hurt the most there? Poor households. Most poorer households that I know have more than one person working on minimum wage. So I'd rather have two people making $13 an hour instead of one making $15 an hour because that's the realistic consequences. Sure. Another thing. Oh, pause from- it. Wait. He just. He got confused yeah, he got by confused his two about talking points. Yeah, that was he switched to the wrong argument. Yeah, he was first trying to say poor households are hurt because they can't afford as many croissants, mm. and then it slid into oh, uh, people lose their jobs, and that is, um, uh, as far as we can tell, sort of a complete fabrication. Yeah, uh, that's been that's like it's a zombie economic talking point. That's big. Like I. I feel like the actual empirical data has not shown it to be borne out by the truth. For that to be the case, then the productivity of that second person would have had to have been like like worth just like literally yeah. like a dollar or something, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like the, the idea that raising the minimum wage, that you could have two people working for $13 or one or- person for $15... <laughs> Would suggest that the productivity of those two people was 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 almost was, like complete. The second person almost had no productivity yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, they do like to threaten that though. Like when McDonald's will automate a restaurant, they'll blame people who want to raise the minimum wage and say, "Look what you made us do," as well, if they weren't going to do that anyway. Of course, of course. 
dollars an hour because that's the realistic consequences. Sure. Mm -hmm. Another thing from a business point of view, if I'm a business person, right, I want to be able to reward the great workers. In this sense, you okay. reward bad workers and you punish good workers. Unless you give them a raise and that cuts into your margin. But, but that gets back to raising the prices though, right? right. So the bottom line <laughs> is, if you want to talk about Wait, no, no, no. Don't, don't, don't tell people that the boss <laughs> can raise, give you a raise. But the that, thing that's stopping it is it'll cut into the margin. I just love when kill me. Like he's like, tries to be helpful and doesn't anything ends up really not helping. And incidentally, what he means by cut into the margin is that will cut into his take home pay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you'd want to give other people more money, but then you get less. <laughs> exactly. It's bullshit. And you punish Thank good workers. Unless you give them a raise and that cuts into your margin. But, but that gets back to raising the prices, though, right? So the bottom line is if you want to talk about people being disposable, her <laughs> idea of her standard minimum wage snuffs out the ambitions of the person at this company who could excel. Why would I excel if the person who's not working hard gets the same pay that I get? Yeah. So, uh, ironically, if, if they were talking about erasing these sort of standards, letting people go in and excel, or excel on their own merit, yeah. that would actually have more potential. <laughs> How do you excel on your own merit? I don't know. As opposed to excel in other ways. In other <laughs> It's, it's, I mean, it is just sort of funny how these are just zombie talking points that are just completely disconnected from reality at this point. Like, it's, it's, there's no, who is, who is trying, who's trying to be persuaded by any of this? Like, who, like, it's, I think no, it's just really, it's like comfort food. It is, it is, it is it's just yeah. comfort food. Yeah. It's just saying, like, comforting, like, just comforting stories that they tell themselves. Like, this goes without saying. But just because there's a floor wage doesn't mean that everybody has to make the same. <laughs> but you cut into your margin. Yes. <laughs> the margins. Yes. Oh, you got to protect the margins. You got to protect the margins. Um, it is, I think, it is basically, I think they wake up at Fox every day and they're like, what is going to be the story that we can include AOC in mm -hmm. and, and drive into our narrative? Did you see the polling that showed that yeah. Republicans have a higher awareness of who she is than, than Democrats. Than Democrats do. Yep, yep. It's, it's uh, everything about. Well, you know, she she ticks every box for them. And this is the, the O'Reilly thing was brilliant too, because Fox and so much of the conservative media is just about hating your own kids, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's, it is it's just like um, they it's just this resentment of the old for the young. It's just driving so much of this. And so if, like, she is their ideal political figure. Totally. Which really Totally. Is. And it's, it's fascinating. I feel like you I could, could just picture interrupting a Fleetwood Mac show. Like <laughs> yes. That. She's like dancing and yeah, holding her phone up. Dancing and <laughs> holding her phone at, and Stevie Hicks <laughs> is there and you can't stay up. I feel like not that, calling her grandparents. If you wanted to, uh, let, people know about the sort of the politics, just the politics, not so much like the policy or the implication, but like sort of the, the politics or the of how media plays with the politics. Like you could put that stat in a uh, time capsule. Yeah. And that would like, I think, uh, you know, some academic, you know, uh, a, a thousand years from now, go, go, you know, like, well, we went, I went back and it was amazing <laughs> yeah. that the people who opposed her actually had a higher awareness of yes. her. <laughs> and what this said about the media landscape at the time. Now, of course, we no longer have the ability to play any of this video because we <laughs> banned it uh, because of the extreme narcissism and the dancing. But, um, but yeah. That, yeah, then that's so, yeah, that's like, uh, and there's a lot of like sort of mainstream when the when the people were talking about how her poll numbers they were like oh she's suddenly she's underwater with everyone except women and young people. <laughs> it was like that was like and the, non whites was, yeah and like and non whites right. and it was and it was like the women and young people and non whites were like didn't know as much about her as the white men did because the white men were just hearing about how evil she is every day on Fox yeah. News. <laughs> um.